Right now, the grandpa's house is closed down. The Pocono, or the, what is it? The Pogonip Club is, po is closed down. It's neat to see this again. I think it would be even cooler if we could have a little more access to it, or you know, maybe you know, we'll see what we can do. You know, a lot of people who come to this movie fly in from other states. So they do even like like you know with this one like I I didn't hear much about it, but, but even so, it, it still gets some, somewhat packed. The beach has a beach of thousands of people. Yeah, so that's pretty big. You want to come up on the 16th when they show? That's what I'm thinking movie. of. Yeah. We can do a big blast on. We've never had anybody in the store from the film, so yeah. you will be a little bit of highlight. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'm Jameson Newlander. I played Alan Frog, one of the Frog Brothers, in the 1987 cult classic movie, The Lost Boys. That's me, with Corey Feldman. By the time The Lost Boys came out, we all realized that we were taking a bit of a right turn for the vampire genre on an unexpected scenic detour through Neverland. Now, more than 35 years later, I'm on a mission to find and rediscover all the lost locations that went into making this amazingly cool movie. Welcome to Jameson Newlander's Lost Locations, Searching for the Lost Boys. We're headed on up to sunny Santa Cruz again. This time, we're joined on our quest by a fun group of Lost Boys fans, some vacationers, some locals, even a cool no-cal artist chick showed up with all four Lost Boys jackets so I could walk the carousel at each one. This is the carousel, the famous Santa Carla carousel, where we open up to our two rival games, the Lost Boys and what were the surf Nazis, actually. Uh, that plot was kind of cut out of the movie, but so that's where they were facing off, Kiefer and David and the head of the surf Nazis, that other guy, you can picture that guy, and him and his girlfriend, that's killed two and three. They're the ones who were in that car who got killed out by the boardwalk, you know, overlooking the boardwalk when they were making out. And then, of course, security guard was also here after the first one. So this, uh, this, this beautiful carousel is kind of like a kiss of death for the first three kills. The significance of this spot right here is that Corey Haynes, look at that, has a plaque right there. I'm so happy to see that. Someone was telling me about this on Instagram and also someone had said it at a convention that, that, that is here and this is the first time I've seen it. I feel touched and it's nice to remember Corey. What, how did this come about? How did you decide to make all these? I was just getting cabin fever during the quarantine. Everybody yeah. was under lockdown. I was like, I need to do something. I wasn't working or anything and you know, I was making my star outfit. And I was like, what if I just went ahead and did all the jackets for the boys? And so I did Paul's jacket and then David's jacket. And I was hesitating to do Marco's because I'm like, I don't know where to start with that. Right. Fishing tackle wars <laughs> on there. There's tapestry. There's all yeah. sorts of different patches. I added some of my own little twists to them just so it wasn't like, it's not super film accurate, but I was like, you know what? It's Close enough. Oh, yeah. It's it impactful. Like it, it, looking at it, you get the idea yeah. that it is, and that's the key, I think. So you guys, you all are from England? Yeah. yeah. And you're out here in Santa Cruz? Yeah, well, two days. So are you, when you come to Santa Cruz, are you Lost Boys fans, or is yeah. this your yeah. parents? You, you're actually the Lost Boys yeah. fans as well. We had actually a bunch of people here from England. You guys are also from England, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? Hull. Hull? Hull, England? Hull? Yeah. Hull. How do you spell that? H and double L. I see, I see. Cool, and I saw you guys in uh, Man with, no, Liverpool, right? Yeah, so we've seen you in a few places. Yeah. We saw you at the Lost Boys reunion in 2019. Uh -huh, and then uh -huh, we saw you right. in Liverpool. Right, right, that's right. And I showed you my outwear. Hey, what? And then I showed you my outwear. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah cool. I'm yeah. glad that I got to walk along the boardwalk with a frog brother. Yeah, that's 
that was really sweet when you said that. That was that made me feel good. That that was that was a good part of your trip. Was it was because it's never I've never experienced anything like that. You know, when the lights go out, you know, as uh, just before, just before our favorite security guard is about to be uh, in the parking lot, the lights start going out. These are the lights. They start going out. Boom, boom, boom. And all the lights are going out on the boardwalk. So that's where we are. So I don't know if you recognize this, but... There's the boardwalk, and now we're in this parking lot where the first kills took place. The security guard. He was he was here. He comes in here, and walking away from the boardwalk, and his car is way up here. And there he is. He's walking. He's walking. He's walking away from the boardwalk, and he looks up, and then he sees it. He sees it. He starts running, and he's running. He's running. He's like, ah, I got a shot at And he gets right to this spot. This is where his car was. Pulls off thing in the car. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the first kill. Here we are. So, uh, you know, this is a, a location that, um, so it's a little controversial because uh, I remember the kill in this happening on a soundstage in, in, in Burbank which is the, you know, the leader of the rival gang. And I don't know if they're ever referred to, but in the script, they were referred to as the surf Nazis. So that, that leader of that rival gang, they stole the comics, you know, and we were like, hey, <laughs> we ran after them. And so, um, so there's the scene of, of him and his girlfriend making out, which, by the way, both of them are very sweet people, uh, lovely people. Um, and I'm bummed that they that their plot kind of got totally decimated in the script. It was it was kind of a whole other plot, but you know when it hits the editor, you know the editor it just a bunch ends up on the floor. And say love you guys, but you did a great job. So so they would have been here, and I mean, look at this view of the boardwalk. I mean, and I, I, and this is my theory that I just developed on the spot, which is that I think that they chose this spot. Because this probably is where the kids in Santa Cruz come to make out. Because seriously, it's incredible here. This is where I would want to come to make out. I mean, I would, you know, like, you, you've got the boardwalk right there. You can see nobody's going to come and mess with you because you're, you're in the dark. You know, when this is in the dark, you've got the ocean out there. It's so romantic and beautiful. This is, this is probably where they come, where they came <laughs> to make out. So they were like, hey, they probably were like, hey, where do the kids go to make out, you know, above the boardwalk? But whether it, it was the real place that the Santa Cruz youth went to, or if it's just that it was a little bit of brilliant, you know, location scouting by uh, Joel and his team, I'm not sure, but this is an incredible little spot here. And so, you know, they were, they were here, and she was laughing about the Archie comics, and he's trying to, you know, cop a feel or, you know, you know can advance the making out, you know, and, uh, and then, of course, they get killed. You know, what are you going to do? Um, that like Santa Cruz, I'm trying to get a, a make on the town because I've been to other towns on the California coast. I mean, I'm from California, and so I've I've been up and down this coast a lot. And it's very, it's actually Santa Cruz is distinctly different from, really different from San Francisco. And uh, Monterey's a little different, and you know Santa Barbara, and you know these other towns that are up and down the coast. San Diego, very different than San Diego. And I'm not quite sure why, but there's something about Santa Cruz that's. Uh, I think a little surfer, a little more surfer town than. I don't know. You can't say that it's more of a surfing town than La Jolla. You know, I mean, La Jolla is mentioned in the Beach Boys song. You know, <laughs> so um, as I try to get a, a, a make on like what Santa Cruz is about, I I don't yet. I don't yet have it, and I I feel sort of. Um, I was thinking earlier about how I kind of feel a little bit melancholy being here, um, and I'm trying to like dissect it and figure it out. That's what I do. I like like oh no, I'm like feeling something other than like absolute happiness. I, there's a little sadness, you know, let me dissect it. That's, that's how I do it. So, and I, and I was looking at it and it's like, of course there's the thing of like, I, when I was here in 1986, like the vibe that I felt, first of all, I, was, I there was a lot of like, um, I knew that I wasn't as much of a veteran in this industry as the people I was working with. And that was okay for me. I was okay with that. I, I was 16, you know, I was, um, I was learning, I was cutting my teeth, you know, to use a fun expression that relates to the movie. <laughs> and so it's like, um, and 
uh, over the years, you know, what the movie's meant to me, you know, what Lost Boys has meant to me, like what it, it's meant to me first as like this vehicle that was, you know, going to make me famous or was going to, you know, redeem me in, in my sort of absurd junior high school reality, you know, you know, or high school reality, you know, it's going to, you know, and then, but then over the years, you know, it became, it, it, it took on different meanings and some of the meanings were failure for a little while because, you know, you look at you looked at you know Feldman and Haim and all the other actors and they're doing great, you know, and their you know their careers are are building and it wasn't really failure. It was different than that. It felt like failure, but I began to understand it a little differently and it was um that it was just about being newer at it than they were. These were people who were in this business, you know, Feldman was in the business since he was three and I had I had just started and I was grateful to be there and stuff, but I was also not really in a position to build a career in that way. And, and so being here, you know, coming back here when I, when I actually have kind of worked through those feelings, worked through those feelings and I feel pretty grateful about my life and about the things I've been able to experience so far in my life. You know hope it continues much more and and here i am taking another shot at a you know a sort of a more higher profile acting career and you know what i hope that works out great i'm really excited about that but i'm also grateful about my life and and coming here to santa cruz it, you know we do these things sometimes in life we punctuate certain things or frame certain things and you know that was 37 years ago i was shooting this movie here and now i'm 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 back here and I and I've gone through so much and it's just it's just I'm very full I'm very full of feelings being here you know so Michael and Sam walking through here Michael hot on the trail this beautiful woman here at the location of the original location of Atlanta's fantasy world it's all peaceful and lovely but in about an hour and a half. It's going to be packed because we're going to be over at Atlanta's Fantasy World.